Well, this morning we want to start a little study of the meaning of the terms we associate with knowledge. So I selected two terms that represent perhaps the polarized opposites of learning. They are knowledge and wisdom. Now, knowledge is something we all know about. It is conveyed to us through the public school system. We live it every day. Everyone who comes into the world practically is trained into some phase of it. Even aboriginal people have their own standards of knowledge. And knowledge is very largely concerned with the problem of getting along in this world. How to live in the environment which no one really fits into exactly. Knowledge, therefore, is the knowledge of the folk. It is the thing we all depend upon for a common agreement on the ordinary subjects of daily existence. This idea of knowledge, however, is very service, uh, very surface. It is not depth, it is not wisdom, it is not insight. It is the communication of the common decisions of people. It is the way we have decided to teach our children. And what we are going to teach them is the knowledge that we know. And the knowledge that we know, I might mention, is not very good. We have a great deal of education, but what are we teaching? Are we teaching the individual to grow, or are we trying to train him for a job? And in most cases, knowledge today is training for a job. It is not only training for a job, but tra training for a very impermanent job. By the time we get the fellow trained, the job isn't there, which is, of course, a little embarrassing. We are noticing this particularly in the age of computers. Many, many young people who went into stenographic schools and learned to run a typewriter find that they are not going to gain very much from that education. The very instruments that they were taught upon are now obsolete. So much of no so-called knowledge is obsolete. It lingers on as long as there is any excuse for it. And there are many arts and crafts that have become obsolete in the present century. I think the old story of the buggy whip is probably as good as any. A man invented a buggy whip. It was the finest thing that was ever invented. He worked with it, built a factory, manufactured them, and spent 20 years selling bobby whips. And then the car came along. And in a very short time, there were only a few luxury families that had carriages and horses anymore. He had outlived his own invention. He had gradually depended upon something that was passing. And knowledge is, for the most part, passing. He does not have any, have any solid foundations in eternity. Knowledge is a way of looking at something, a particular way. This way may change any day. This also is a way of approximating our understanding of what is wise and what is not wise. Knowledge gives us the history of the activities of our people. It gives us a certain history of our own nation and our own world. But this history deals with situations that no longer exist. Or if they do exist, to become so subordinated that we gain very little from continuing to maintain them. So knowledge, we have to say, is a surface thing. It is adapted to the whims of the hour. It is adjusted to the needs of the moment. And this is what we get when we go to public school. We do not get from the schooling any broad depth of understanding concerning human nature. We do not learn any high ideals about the destiny of man. We are not even allowed to bring in any religious factors, for faith they will disturb the so-called placid sur surface of the existing chaos. This situation, it means that we have knowledge. Knowledge that will fit only in certain, certain situations. We send a child to school 
and they bring home the paper and tell us what they're learning. This learning they're getting now is not what we got when we were the children. We were the children. Changes have come. Everything is different. The old ways are outgrown. Or the old facilities are no longer available. Now, as we live today in this environment, we realize that we are gradually changing the world in which we live. We are changing the surface of the earth. We are crowding communities. We are endangering the basic utilities of life. We keep right on going, trying to continue a policy that is gradually cutting life out from under us. So this is what we have to think about. Therefore, what we commonly call knowledge is simply a story of doing what we always have done as nearly as possible, or continuing the way of doing as we do now, which is probably not possible. But at the particular moment we graduate the young folks from high school, they go get a picture of our present condition with all the negative factors overlooked and the positive factors exaggerated. So out of this we come to a surface knowledge, a kind of superficial effort to estimate our own responsibility in a world which takes no responsibility for anything. We find in all the arts we find this change constantly taking place. In the, in the sciences, they are not immune. Religious theories change. Architecture changes. And as we look around us, most of these changes appear to be for the worse. We're not doing as well as we did. Our buildings do not look as beautiful as they did in the Renaissance. Our music is not as good as it was in the lyric 19th century. Everything seems to be getting brittle, disillusioned, and more or less discouraged. So we build in a discouragement into the educational system. We decree that all these things must pass away. And we have great publicity over this. We have tremendous talk about correcting this and changing that and building something else. But it all represents what we would call knowledge. Knowledge is our effort to understand things as it is, or to perpetuate through education policies that are almost deficient themselves. So this is one way of looking at it. And also all knowledge is from the outside. We get our knowledge out of books. We get the, our knowledge out of listening. We get our knowledge out of looking. But everything is of, as of now. It is as of the individual facing the future by estimating the exact circumstances which are in force the day he enters the future. He, by the time he's ready to leave the future, or rather let the future leave him, it may be entirely different. So now we have a problem of education. Well, how are we going to educate people for a world that may not exist by the time they get out of school? This doesn't mean the world's going to fall apart, but it means that policies are going to change, values are going to change, and gradually and inevitably, materialism is going to slip away. And of course, knowledge is essentially anchored in materialism. It is the way in which we try to understand the kind of a world we have created, which has little or nothing to do with the world as it really is. It is a world deprived of its beauties, of its values, of its friendships, of its affections, and of its com community projects. It is a world of rugged individualism, moving largely on a basis of profit, and determined definitely to perpetuate the, the con conditions as they are now, which they can't do. So we go around and we study. We, uh, we take courses in language, because maybe we will want one of them one of these days. A second language is a major asset today.